Hi there, and welcome to another Insomnia Insight episode that I hope will bring lots of value to you. We're going to talk about the pendulum method. It is something I've been thinking about for quite a while, but it's I guess that's kind of digested in my brain, and I hopefully it's it's pretty ready to be presented here. And before we talk about like what this is and how it's helpful, I want to share a little bit of the background. I mean, these thoughts had been in my mind for a while, but then what happened is randomly, you know, me and my kids were near the dining table, and I think somebody hit hit the head in one of the lamps, like those hanging lamps that are over the dining table, and it started swinging, you know, from side to side. And when I saw it swinging like that, I realized that, hmm, I can I can I can kind of challenge my kids and see how how quickly they get this, right? So I told my kids, uh, hey. Um, let's see how, how how fast you can get this to stop swinging, you know? And sure enough, like my daughter kind of got on the, the dining table and she started kind of like trying to put it there and then it was still swinging a little bit. Then she tried to put it like that, stabilizing it. But like, but the, she realized pretty soon that the more she tried to manipulate it, the, the more it just kept on swinging. And, and sure enough, pretty soon she realized that if she did nothing, that was actually the fastest way to get that lamp to just stay where it's at, you know. And, and, and what does this have to do with sleep? Well, you know, the teaching point here, uh, I think it's a pretty obvious teaching point, which is that the more we try to manipulate or tweak, the longer it takes until things be become pretty stable and peaceful, right? And, and, and but seeing this was where I thought, I, I'll call this like the pendulum method because of that, the pendulum actually, the pendulation, if you will, actually sees this when we do nothing. But the question becomes, you know, how can you how can you apply this in a more practical way? How can you apply this in a more practical way? That's what we're going to talk about today. So you'll see this very easy, actually, very easy and practical. And so before we go to sort of what this is about, um, we, we I want to review like two reasons, two reasons why sleep becomes unstable. Uh, and in these, I, I said here, these are kind of immediate response reasons because uh, there are there are many things that can make sleep unstable. For example, thinking that um, how I do during the day uh, is uh, is really determined by how much I sleep, that puts a lot of pressure on sleep and, and that can make it unstable. It, you know, thinking that, oh, if I take this and this and that, but not this, then they'll have, that can make sleep unstable as well. But there are two sort of like ways you react to a night of sleep that uh, are kind of an immediate response to what happened that also can make sleep unstable, a lot of swings. And the two things, the first of the two things is meaning. And this is attributing a lot of meaning to how you slept last night. So for example, if you had a night where you slept little, you know, you go into like, this means something is wrong with me. This means I'm never gonna get it. This means, and this, it often becomes projection too. This means I'm never gonna sleep well. You know, there's a lot of meaning to this particular night. And on the flip side, when you slept well, it was like, yes, this means there's nothing wrong with me. I am a sound human being. Uh, and now I'm gonna sleep really, really well. Like, you know, in both those instances, you can almost sense how this leads to instability. Because if there's so much meaning, then, you know, uh, you know, one night you sleep little, and that means, you know, you're never gonna sleep again. And that actually decreases pressure. And then you sleep better. And then you feel like, oh, you know, this means I'm always going to sleep well. I'm great. And then that's more pressure, more preoccupation. So you see this meaning, attributing meaning to how I slept last night. It creates a lot of instability, a lot of, lot of back and forth. Same thing with the win and lose thinking. So if one night you slept a uh, little again, and you think, you think of this as a loss, as a failure. I was unable to do something, you know? Uh, that uh, that is like loss thinking, if you will. You think a little sleep is a loss, a failure. And on the flip side, you you slept uh, more or better, and then you think, yes, I did it. I won. You're victorious. You figured it out. You know, this win or lose thinking. Also, you can almost sense how this does not lead towards like peaceful sleep because you're always trying to win or trying not to lose, and and that you know. Um, does not lend itself to like peaceful sleep either. So we've seen two reasons now uh, in the immediate reaction to how you slept last night that contributes to this instability of sleep, if you will. So um, before we go again to the more details of the pendulum method, what do you need to know? Not that much actually, you just need to know kind of the basic sleep uh, sleep physiology, basic, uh, basic um, uh, gas and drive here. Not sleeping 
happens when uh, we are not sleepy or we are hyper aroused. And with insomnia, it's really always the latter, right? It's like you're not sleeping because you're not sleepy. It's, it's because you are hyper aroused, anxious, excited, worried, stressed, something like that is keeping sleep from happening. Now, sleep happens on the flip side when we are somewhat sleepy to some degree and not particularly hyper aroused. We don't need to be super sleepy. We just, the body needs to sleep to some degree and there's not that worry, excitement, hyper arousal blocking sleep from happening. So that's it, that's sleep physiology. So how does the pineal method work again? This is it, two things. When you have a night of little sleep, you attribute this to the true reason, which was you were hyper aroused. I didn't sleep much yesterday because I was anxious. Boop, that's it. And when you sleep well, you attribute this to the true reason, which was I was not so anxious yesterday. I was more actually, I was okay with being awake. I wasn't trying to resist it. I was I was more willing to be awake yesterday. That's it. And that's, that's, all, that's all it is. That is all it is. That's the pendulum method. Slept little. Attributed to, okay, I was anxious. You slept more? Oh, I was more willing to be awake. I was less anxious. That is it. But this way, it sounds kind of like too simple, right? But by doing so, you you really, really uh, uh, move forward in, in a very helpful way. Because this, this helps so much because you remove these two things that make sleep so unstable. You remove meaning. There's no meaning to the fact that I slept a little. I was simply a bit anxious. There's no meaning to me sleeping quite a bit. It just meant I was uh, trying less. I was more willing to be awake. That's it. All right. And there's no win or lose thinking. You know, I slept little. There wasn't a loss. I was just a little anxious. I slept uh, well. That was not a win. I was just uh, less anxious. I was, you know, that is it. That's the pendulum method. And so you can you can sense how when you do this, you know, over time, you know, you learn from every single night, you know. And it, by the way, if it's one kind of in between night, you're like, oh, I was kind of in between. <laughs> That's it. You know, nothing, nothing else, you know, that, that's it. And as a kind of like, as an added bonus, if you will, when you have this, just this clarity that comes from sort of the experience, we, we see things for what they are, this in itself leads to less hyper arousal, which also helps with less, uh, less of this instability pattern. So uh, yeah, this was it really. Let, let me know what you think. I hope this will be really helpful and valuable and please comment uh, and, and let me know how this sounded. And I'll look forward to having you back here uh, really soon. Uh, until then, take care.